So given these two sets here, what is the cardinality of set B? Now cardinality is just a fancy way of saying how many things are in the set. In other words, what's the count of the set? Um, and we'll often represent that using the sort of n of b. This says the number of elements in set b. Or sometimes you'll see absolute value or size of b rep uh, used in set. But we're going to go ahead and use this. So the number of elements in set b, all we have to do is count how many elements there are. There are one, two, three, four of them. So the cardinality of set b is just four. Okay, what is the cardinality of a union b? Well, in order to answer that, let's go ahead and find the union. So we need to union these two sets. So we've got everything from A, and now we're going to combine that with everything from B. We already have two, we already have four, we already have six. We just need eight. And this set has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven elements. So the number of elements in A union B is seven. Now for the intersection, let's see the intersection of the two is, let's see, we got two, four, and six in both sets. So the number of elements in the intersection is three. So the last question here is unrelated to those sets. It says, what is the cardinality of set P, which is the set of English names for the months of the year? So uh, as you probably know, there are uh, 12 months in the year. So the number of month names, or actually I guess I should say, the number of elements in set P is 12. There are 12 names for the months of the year. So a survey asks 200 people, what beverage do you drink in the morning? And offers these choices, tea only, coffee only, or both coffee and tea. Now suppose that 20 report tea only, 80 report coffee only, 40 report report both, could we figure out how many people total drink tea in the morning? How many people drink neither tea or coffee? To do this, uh, we're going to use a Venn diagram, because it gives us a nice way to sort of picture what's going on. So we're going to imagine the universal set. This is everybody. Remember, there's 200 people in this set. And we're going to draw a couple circles here. The first circle is going to be for coffee, and the second circle is going to be for, for tea. Now we can start introducing the information we know. We know that 20 people report T only, so they would be in this region here. The part that only includes T does not include C. 80 re people report coffee only. 40 people report both, so they will be in the intersection of those two sets. A and notice that all together we have 140 people there. We knew that there was 200 people total, and so that leaves 60 people outside of those two sets. Now, for most problems, it doesn't really matter whether the picture is, is representative size-wise of the actual sizes, and so it doesn't really bother me that this circle is the same size as that one. We're just using them for representation. So now can, we can answer the question, how many people drink tea in the morning is another way of saying what's the size of set T. And now from our picture, we can see that that's going to be 40 people plus 20 is 60 people who drink tea in the morning. So how many people drink neither tea or coffee? So how many people are not in the union of those two sets? Uh, and we already figured out when we were counting up that because there's 200 people, the combination of the two sets contains 140, that there must be 60 people who drink neither coffee or tea. Let's look at another one. Uh, here we have a survey that asks, which online services have you used in the last month? Twitter, Facebook, or have you used both? Um, now, the survey results showed that 40% have used Twitter, 70% uh, have used Facebook, and 20% have used both. But in this case, the 40% who said they've used Twitter includes those who have used both. Uh, a little bit different of a, of a scenario here. And so here we've got our, our, our Twitter circle and our, and our Facebook circle, if you will. And we know that 20% of people have used both. We know that 40% have used Twitter, but we already know that 
uh, of those 40, 20 uh, have uh, have used both. So that leaves 20% who have just used Twitter. Um, out of our Facebook folks, we, if we got 40% who have used Facebook, 20% have already used both, and so we have 50 who um, have only used Facebook. Now to answer our question here, how many people have used neither Facebook or Twitter, what we really need, what we're wondering here is the number of people who have not used Facebook or Twitter. So Facebook or Twitter would be the union of the two, and we're looking for how many people are not in either. Now using the Venn diagram, we can answer that pretty easily. We've got 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 percent of people here in the combination of the two sets, which leaves 10 percent outside of those two sets. Now also, you might be thinking, well, couldn't we have just added up the number of users in each set. Well, yes and no, because that would add up to 110. What's going on here? Uh, well, we'd be double counting the folks in both sets, so if we were going to do that, we would need to subtract out the intersection of the sets to get our 90 percent in the union of sets T and F, and then the complement to that would be our 10 percent. So 50 students were surveyed and asked if they were taking a social science, humanities, or natural science course the next quarter. And here are the survey results. And we're wondering how many students are only taking a social science class. Uh, because these 21 who are taking a social science class may have also been taking some others. So, uh, to work with this, let's bring in, again, a Venn diagram. This is going to help us uh, picture what's going on. Uh, and we have sort of our universal set here, which we may or may not need to deal with, but go ahead and draw it in. So let's start with the most specific piece of information here. So we know that three students were taking all three courses. So in our inter middle intersection here, containing all three sets, we got three people. We also got seven outside of all three um, sets, and so we'll go ahead and mark that in. I'm going to mark these off as I work with them. So now seven students were taking a social science and a natural science class, which means those seven people would be in the intersection of the SS and NS sets here. Of those seven, three are taking all three, which leaves four students who were taking uh, a social science and natural science, but not a humanities class. Now, ten were taking a humanities and a natural science class, of which three are taking all three, so which leaves seven uh, for this part of the set. Uh, and then there were n nine taking social science and humanities, three of which are taking uh, all three, which leaves six for that portion of the set. Now, we can say, uh, we had 21 students taking a social science class. We have 6 and 4 is 10 is plus, uh, plus 3 more is 13 students here. So we got 13 students already accounted for. So 21 minus those 13 students leaves us with 8 students uh, for this region here. And that lets us answer our question. There are 8 students taking only a social science class. So here we have a set of uh, uh, three sets, and we're going to try to find these these unions and intersections. Now you notice that we're using parentheses here. Our parentheses are being used. Uh, here they're being used as grouping symbols, kind of like with algebra. Uh, and the grouping symbols say what you should do first. So here the parentheses tell me that first I need to figure out what the intersection of H and F are. So H and F, the intersection are the elements that are in both sets, which look like dog and, and rabbit. So now we'll union that 
with the set w. So that we'll, we'll need our dog and our rabbit from the h intersect f set, and then we'll need the elements of w, which would include duck. We already have rabbit, so we don't need to list it again. Deer, frog, and, and mouse. Now, let's try the uh, next problem, which you'll notice has the same sets, same symbols, but different grouping order. So first, now, we're going to find the union of F and W. This is going to be a fairly big set. So we got dog, cow, duck, pig, and rabbit from the set F union that with W. We already got duck, we already got rabbit, we need a deer, we need a frog, and we need a mouse. And now we're going to intersect that with the set H. So let's see here. Dog, both of them have in common. Uh, cat, no. Rabbit, yep. And how about mouse? Oh, mouse is in both sets. Now notice that the, the results are different, so the gr order of grouping does make a difference here. Okay, so now for the last one, we're going to start out by finding the intersection of H and W, which we did earlier. Now remember that this little C here is meaning complement, so the complement of uh, H intersect F is not dog or rabbit. I know I could list out all the other possibilities, but I don't really want to here. So we're going to intersect not dog and rabbit with the set W. So we can take everything from W that's not a dog or a rabbit. So we'll go ahead and take the duck. We will skip the rabbit because we're not supposed to take dogs or rabbits. Uh, deer, frog, and mouse. And that is the intersection of W with the complement of H intersect F.